What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason, Joe, and Krams are here. This is a surprise episode, unannounced, celebrating, I guess, the new Metallica album, 72 Seasons. Uh, this is the first remaster of a listography that Joe and Cram did and that I did not. So I'm making this ranking for the first time. They are redoing their lists. So we'll see if there's have changed at all and we'll find out what my thoughts on Metallica are. I've heard most of these, if not all of them at some point before, but not a lot. And they're not a band that I revisit much ever. So uh, probably the one I have the most familiar fam familiarity with is Load, which I had a burned copy of from a high school friend. And that's the only one I listen to with any regularity. So yeah, I'm ready. How are you guys feeling? Ready for a remaster? Ready. All right. I'm going to kick it off. Some things have indeed changed in my list, but not the bottom. Number 11 for me is Saint Anger. I think it's their worst. It has one of the most famously bad sounds on an album ever recorded. That snare sound is just atrocious. It's a weird in-between record. It felt forced. They were going through a lot of personal issues. And it kind of seemed like they were begrudgingly like, let's try to do an album to help our personal lives. And it's really unmelodic. It's loud. It's obnoxious. It's angry. It's fierce. Kirk doesn't have any memorable guitar parts. It's just like really nice, elegant, melodic nature isn't around. And James is really grungy and dirty and like overly masculine. But the lyrics are kind of trite and cute. And there's terrible rhymes. You know, literally nothing by a pretty good band of my in this album, so it's still my number 11. And we are doing star ratings now. We didn't do star ratings back in the original, and St. Anger gets one star from me. Well, it was also my number 10 back in the day, and it's just, ugh, it is just a dumpster fire. Everything sounds bad. Um, the guitars sound terrible. The drums, legendarily bad. Even James is vocals, who usually I like. I mean, I don't even mind his pirate 90s phase, but he's just like trying so hard to be like different or, or whatever, like the primal scream therapy that they were doing. Like it's supposed to be like raw and like aggressive. And it sounds like he's trying so hard to just be like this different person. Like, I don't believe that's the real James Hetfield at all coming through. And yeah, there's there's nothing from Kirk Hammett. The bass basically non-existent. And you're you're just getting like this terrible, like the worst possible Metallica sound. And the song, the song writing itself is awful. Invisible Kid is just one of the worst lyrically. And I think they're actually good lyricists. I mean, if you look at their 80s stuff, like it's way brainier and more advanced and more complex than like their peers were doing in metal and on this like it just sounds like they're trying so hard to be like cool or edgy or, or something and it just totally comes off wrong um yeah just a legendary a legendary disaster and i like it even less i think now uh, than i did before so I'm, I'm one and a half stars which is yeah it's it's terrible it's just total garbage all right yeah we are a trifecta at the bottom. I've got St. Anger. Uh, I don't know. You'd think like with the amount of struggle that they went through to make this record and for it to turn out the way that it did is just embarrassing. It's so bad. I mean, the drum sound has been discussed to death, so I won't even talk about that that much. But I think everything else about this album is almost just as bad. I think... The lyrics are really cringy. The riffs are lazy. There's no finesse to it at all. It's just like this thing that they like grunted out. It just like, what? It's so, so bad. And it makes me wonder if like Bob Rock, you know, has lost his hearing or if maybe the good records that he had produced were an accident and like he just like fluked into that because I don't know how you could go from making big good sounding records to this uh and i actually get uncomfortable listening to it because i don't know just like the way that they're like these rich guys working through anger issues while p 
putting in like almost no musical effort. It's just them like screaming nonsense. Like it, it's really bad. It, every song's like a teenage diary entry. It's just so so embarrassing. It's really bad. One star. Oof. Three way just abysmal critique. My number 10 is considerably better at two stars. I've got Reload. I think it's slightly simpler, sim- simple, more simple, simpler, and heavier than Load. But I think it's way too slow, way too sludgy. You get no thrash, no speed, no like technical prowess. I don't think Lars is a good drummer when he does the slow stuff, and I think it really brings down this era for them. I don't mind Fuel or Slither. Those are kind of the exceptions to that. I never really liked Memory Remains. I don't like how James sings that. I have a big problem with James. I can take him in the 80s, but then I just think he's absolutely terrible in the 90s, which is a shame because they have written some good songs in the 90s. I think Unforgiven Part 2 is pretty lousy. Prince Charming absolutely sucks. I hate when he does the Hey Ma, Look at Me. It's so lame. Uh, Yeah, less is more for me with James. And there's just way too much sludge. It's not exciting. It's not impressive. It doesn't get your blood boiling. Carp DM Baby sounds like a seaside from like the worst Alice in Chains record. I hate the vocals on Bad Scene. It just doesn't have anything that you want from Metallica, but it's still way better than St. Anger at the same time. So a big step up at two stars, number 10, Reload. All right, my number 10, and this has fallen a little bit for me. I'm going with Death Magnetic. This was like their comeback from St. Anger. Um but and you know the critics liked it and everyone liked it like oh yeah metallica's back i after hearing like saint anger again i hear too much saint anger in death magnetic and i don't know if it comes down to the production or just sort of like the bludgeoning like i don't know the riffs aren't there the production from rick rubin is terrible like i can see why jason doesn't like rick rubin sometimes and this is a great example it's super compressed like there's clipping I don't like the guitar tones. I think the drums obviously sound better than St. Anger, but still not great. And uh, there's just something about this other than um, the one like more progressive, I think interesting song today that never comes, which kind of channels, you know, fade to black and uh, ride the lightning era stuff. Everything else sounds just like it's, stuck in a you know a, the mud between like the 90s and they're sort of like overly aggressive macho like brawny pirate stuff and yet they're like trying to like work in sort of the progressive 80s stuff and i just don't think it works i just did not enjoy this album at all uh, other than the, the day that never comes is pretty good and i remember hearing that as the, the single and i was like ah oh, okay the top is back but I don't know. That cyanide's pretty good. Uh, it's kind of twisty. But like Unforgiven 3, like Unforgiven 2 was was pushing it. And now we get another Unforgiven. And it just doesn't add anything to the Unforgiven saga. Uh, the album starts off with its two worst songs. And just I don't like anything about it. I don't like the sound of it. I don't like the playing, the production. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it's significantly better than St. Anger. It's three stars, but um, I don't get the sort of like comeback hype for this one at all. All right. I agree that there's too much comeback hype on that one, but I am with Cram in the 10 spot. I got Reload. Definitely was wise not to release this as a double album as was, as was originally planned. I think individually it's way too much music. Just like one album at a time is like, God, is this ever going to end? There is some good stuff here. Okay stuff, I guess I should say. But even more so than on Load, a lot of what's here feels second rate. I don't mind Unforgiven 2. I think that's one of the better songs here, actually. Fuel's fine. Memory M- Remains, I think, is cool. I never really realized until this week that uh, that was Marianne Faithful on there singing. But so much of the other stuff on this record feels like the same thing just over and over and over again. And... It's it's kind of funny, like, so much of what is referred to as post-grunge, I think really comes from the 90s Metallica. Black Album Load, Reload, I think is very responsible for quite a lot of 
bad music, people following them in their footsteps. And yeah, uh, so I, I wouldn't say that this is as bad as what came after with like Nickelback and stuff. This is a, a step above that kind of stuff, but not much. Yeah, heading down a, a bad path here. Uh, and that crash and burn on the next one. Two and a half stars for Reload. All right. My number nine, I've got Load. Still just at two stars. It starts off strong with Ain't My Bitch. Cool groove. Kirk's guitar is good, but the James. Just terrible melody in his vocals. The chorus is a little better. I despise when he goes, Ain't My Bitch. Like, I just, the whole shtick is just terrible to me. The album is going for like more of a hard rock, maybe even southern rock kind of player at times, like 70 hard guitar riffs. You know, two by four is kind of sunnier for them, and I'm not really feeling it. And I think when it's slow and sunken, like it's just not what I want my Metallica to be. Like Jason was saying, like you get Nickelback and Stained kind of just being like, you can just play these really hard, like, you know, uh, double bass and then snare and then just let the power speak for itself with a power chord and it's just it's not interesting at all it does have until it sleeps though and i friggin love that song but it's entirely different from everything else in the album I spent my whole life thinking it was on the black album hero of the day is sunny and pleasant but just needs a new singer on it so badly he does not know how to sing some of these songs at all in theory i really like the attempts and the vision of this album i just think they missed the mark Bleeding Me has a cool bass line, but ultimately it's a pretty boring-ass song. Cure is weak. Uh, so yeah, not really impressed with Load. Two stars, my number nine. Well, I think that's a bit of a load myself. Um, I think Hetfield's a fine singer. Uh, perfect for this style. I think he's the greatest bro post-grunge pirate singer of all time. Uh, my number nine is going to be 72 seasons the newest one um you know getting out of the way the perfunctory this is their fifth decade and 40 years after the debut they sound great and i think they sound pretty good uh music is very clean seems to be trying to channel like the black album again uh i think hetfield sounds great I think, you know, it's obviously not raw and ragged like the 80s, and he's not doing like that pirate, the, you know, the yas and whatever that he was doing in the 90s. But uh, I think it's holding up very well, and it's stately, kind of mature, grandfather of metal register. Um, but I think the music just isn't interesting enough, and I'm getting a little sick of Hammett's guitar solos, like they're they're just so boring it's just like wah like wee, 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 wah. that's all it is for like the last 20 years i uh, really just kind of phoning it in and it's weird unlike most like metal bands who like get better and add new stuff like metallica like regressed the, the more uh into their career they got because they started i mean hammett was a phenomenal guitarist in the 80s and then soon as like black album hit he just like gave up and just has been doing the same thing ever since and it kind of brings this one down for me because there's some good riffs i mean hetfield riff master i don't know i just these songs seem just like retreads they're they're fast and that's good and uh, you know this has got some quick changes and some twistier songs but like shadows follow sounds exactly like black album sleepwalk my life away sounds exactly like enter sandman uh, you Must Burn's got like this big herky-jerky lumbering Frankenstein riffs. And, you know, maybe some time signature changes, but I don't know, it's missing like a good guitar solo or something to set it apart from the rest of their discography. Uh, some good uh, riffs on Darkness Had a Sun, Too Far Gone, Room of Mirrors. But again, Hammond solos are boring. I think my favorite song is Lux Eterna which is a nice short three minutes and 25 seconds. And it's just like right blazingly brutally fast. And I could use a little more of those like speedy, just like balls to the wall, kill them all era stuff and less of the kind of slog. So I, I think it's a decent album and I, I couldn't, I've been going back between three and 3.5 stars. 
but like a low 3.5 like it's like a, a seven it j just barely guessed the 3.5 um but maybe i'll just now nah, i'm gonna go back to three stars because I, I just don't think they've earned that uh extra half star so three stars for 72 seasons my number nine all right my number nine is death magnetic and it's the first one with robert trujillo on bass and musically and sonically it's it's so much better than saying anger but i mean anything would have been and i don't entirely disagree with joe that it's not that great of a sounding record it's uh rick rubin and usually r records that he produces don't sound very good it's faster which is good a little bit thrashier again which is also good it's not so like sluggish the solos return that's also good it's kind of a back to basics record for them which in this case actually means that they're returning to some level of complexity, getting away from just like the pounding out power chords and detuned guitars. But I think as much as it wants to recapture like the old glories, and I think as close as it gets at times, it just, I, I can't, can't quite get there with the current state of, of James's vocal delivery. I think it's a far cry from the eighties on this record it's it's still pretty shouty and and new metal-y kind of cadence going on um not much melody and and the way that he's using like lyrics and syllables and like fitting words in just rhythmically is just really clunky a lot of the times on this record again the record itself is just too long and it's more exhausting than it is exciting so I think there's a bunch of stuff here that kind of sort of sounds like 80s Metallica, but nothing remotely as close to being as memorable. I don't think there's a single riff here that will stick with anyone the way, you know, Seek and Destroy does or For Whom the Bell Tolls or Master of Puppets or there's nothing remotely on that level of memorability. So it's kind of sort of like an 80s Metallica record, but it doesn't get there quite enough. It just kind of almost highlights even more how incapable of that they they were at this point so uh three stars for me yeah that's my number eight death magnetic i feel pretty much the same way i like i i like where they're going but they don't quite get there i think it's the best way so throw back to them having more complex arrangements multi-layering interplay a lot more progressive nature everything's not so stagnant there's cool little riffs everywhere, but nothing like among their best stuff. Um, I like the riffing at the end of the end of the line a lot. I'm not sure how memorable the songs are on their own there, which I feel is something I fall into with metal a lot in general. Uh, but this one actually grew on me from last time. I used to have it at two. I've got it up to 2.5 now because I do think the metal in it is pretty good and powerful and heavy. Like the thunderous drums on Broken Beaten and Scared. He had a little piano in Unforgiven 3. The Day That Never Comes has like a cool and majestic kind of a sound to it maybe the most memorable song on there for me i think the album finishes on a good note but the songs are just you know everything's too long the whole album you know even for this album where like the songs are mostly like five six seven minutes at the end you get the judas kiss eight minutes suicide and redemption 10 minutes and just draws it out too much it's like perfectly at 2.5 it's it's not very good i don't want to go back to it but it's not a not a waste yeah uh my number eight i'm gonna go with load on this one i'm probably one of the rare people who has reload ahead of load but load to me is just a little more straightforward than reload for some reason i was doing something and i had reload on and i listened to it like four times in a row kind of without noticing just it was kept going repeating repeating and i kind of liked it now uh because i never really used to but uh, in comparison, load, I don't know, it just seems a little boring. Like this is where between the black album and load is where like Nickelback and like all that like butt rock really like was formed out of. And I couldn't not hear it this time. Like I think I missed that when we did Metallica the first time. Like now, like there's some songs, like all I hear is like chad kroger and like the nickelback boys just like chugging out these riffs and it just it makes me cringe um two by four i think is one of those just like unearned badassery songs that just doesn't work at all one of my least favorite to date and i do like like ain't my bitch is good 
but I like fuel, which is just a rewrite from reload better. Um, Until It Sleeps is good. King Nothing is pretty good. Like it's very much black album sounding, just big menacing hard rock. Um, I think the only like interesting song on here is Hero of the Day, which kind of, you know, a little like alt rock even, uh, but I really like that uh, chord progression, the use of the quiet, loud dynamics. It's very melodic, powerful. It's not like bro in your face all the time, like some of this stuff. Um, you know, Hammett's really getting into the wah, uh, bleeding me, especially. Or Twisted Me, you know, they had a little slide guitar. So they're they're kind of picking from like Southern rock and stuff. But I just think they're like taking the wrong things. Like it's just like all that macho aggression. And like none of like they were pretty ahead of the game in the 80s as far as like doing a ballad and having like brainy lyrics talking about politics and you know things like the death penalty and war and like i'm not getting any of this like it's like they completely regressed as soon as the black album came out and they're just like you know what we just want a lot of money and we're just going to make these kind of generic big heavy rockers you know i'm going to be a pirate so i don't know i miss that progressive spirit and i i think it's it's good. Like you can't knock them for their reinvention. Like they're basically an underground band. The black album comes out. It's the biggest selling album of the sound scan era. It's huge. And they're kind of just coasting off of that at this point. So, you know, good for them. They earned it, but I, you know, I just want more and it's too long. God, is it too long? It's uh, forever, but uh, you know, and as much as I've talked shit about it, it's probably a three and a half star album but it's, it's just too long. Okay. Controversy time. My number eight is the Black Album. I don't really think it's that much better than The Loads. I think it's pretty much the same thing. And it, it suffers from overplay badly for me. Um, you know, it's less thrashy. They, they went in this more commercial direction. They slower tunes, more of like an ominous heaviness than, than the fast thrashy stuff. And, and yeah, I mean... It was one of the biggest records of all time. Pushed metal further into the mainstream for sure. Made them a household name. Can't deny the effectiveness of Bob Rock's production. And I think it's obvious why it was so successful. It's really tight and streamlined. And the songs are really direct and intense. But I don't know. Like I I had heard these songs hundreds and hundreds of times before I ever sat down and listened to it as an album. So it's weird. It like never really feels like listening to an album i almost can't experience it the way it's meant to be like i feel when i listen to it i feel like i'm listening to the radio so it's it's pretty much incapable of reaching me on an emotional level and there's the argument of like whether or not you should consider overplay as part of a score for for how you feel about a record and i i think you should i i think it affects how you feel and if i don't want to listen to the record then obviously i shouldn't score it higher so I don't know. For me, Unforgiven is my favorite track on the record. I don't really care about any of the other hits. I don't really like much of of this record. I think it's just fine. I understand why people like it, but it's just, uh, I mean, it's just pretty, pretty bland. Three stars for the Black Album. All right. I don't, I think that's not too far off, but my number seven, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. 2.5 it's getting close to three i think if it wasn't a double album i could find a three-star album in here you know it's just too much it comes out blasting i get really into it there's that feeling of fierceness it feels like old school metallica but again like not as memorable like you can kind of capture the sensation but nothing is as mem- as memorable as you know the stuff off the first four or five records getting to their roots a little bit more with more thrash influence and I don't dislike really any of the tracks. They just don't stick with me. Like Atlas Rise has really nice crunch on it. Moth into Flame, I dig a good bit. You know, I can even take James a good bit on here. He's just being kind of powerful and mean. I think Jason was touching on it a couple album reviews ago where he said like he can be really awkward with his melodies and stuff, forcing stuff in. So when those songs kind of call for that, they're just, they're just terrible for me. But when he's just doing simple metal stuff, yeah, it's a lot better. 
Um, now that we're dead has some of Lars more memorable drum work. I don't think Lars is a very good drummer. Most of the time, I think he's adequate a lot of the time, especially in the early stuff, but I think he's pretty acceptable in this album for me. It just kind of feels like it could have been a weak follow-up to justice for all. I think confusion is badass. There's some sick chugging on it, man, unkind. I think though, a nice change up in that intro doesn't really do it for me. Definitely doesn't have the low points of some of the other albums has a little bit of like medium high points. And again, I think I might enjoy it if it were just cut in half, but I will never want to listen to it again. And that's the threshold for three stars. So 2.5, number seven. My number seven going with Reload. And I'm still at three and a half stars for this one because it's too long. I, the same with Load. There's a four star album buried in here. But again, like with Load, you're getting like those hints of butt rock post grunge nickelback like seether kind of stuff and it, it's just too hard to ignore you know things like carpe diem baby and devil's dance and better than you like you can hear it's just like the seeds of like all that terrible rock and roll that will come after and it was mostly because of this guy on twitter mitch lafon who's like this he's the biggest nickelback fan in the world and his favorite album i think is the black album and I kind of like, I follow him. So I was like connecting the dots. I was like, why does he love Nickelback so much? Oh, I kind of get it now because he loves the Black album. And like that seeded like all of that terrible 2000s rock. And um, it's not all bad. Like Reload has some cool songs. Fuel's great. Uh, just that, you know, pedal to the metal, hard charging, down the highway kind of song. Uh, Hammett actually shows some life with an interesting guitar solo i think lars pretty good behind the, the drum kit and for the most part I, I agree with crams there he's it's weird for like a metal band to have a not good drummer and he's not a good drummer he has like hints in the 80s of like okay maybe he is a good drummer and then he kind of regresses like with the rest of the band in the 90s but i like the memory remains i think it's pretty cool um, that whining, droning guitar sound is neat. There's some harmonic scraping going on underneath, like Marianne Faithful's wailing. That's cool. Uh, Unforgiven twos, pretty darn good. Even though the fact that he says um, Unforgiven two, like T O O, and it's Unforgiven two is like basically unforgivable kind of wordplay. But I, I think the song's pretty good. Where the wild things are has some like dreamier elements to it fixer has a badass riff and lemon's lyric has some cool um like touching lyrics i think a little bit more of that classic 80s hatfield i think this album's a little less mainstream a little weirder uh than load and i think it's a lot of times it's just a rewrite but i think the rewrites are more successful so it's not like a lot better than load but i think it's a, a little bit better than load so uh my number seven reload three and a half stars all right, my number seven is Load. And so, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I think it's pretty close with the Black Album. I think this one for me, though, has maybe a few higher highs because I really like Ain't My Bitch a lot. I think that song's really cool. It's fast and heavy. It's got that nice melodic pre-chorus. I think 2 by 4 is pretty cool, kind of uh, groovy type of song. The singles, I think, are all really strong. I like Hammett's solo on King Nothing a lot, and I agree with Joe. I think Hero of the Day is just a, a pretty good rock song. I think there's a lot of really good guitar tones on this record. So I think th the good stuff on this record, I think, feels a lot fresher. Like, they're trying some things out. They're They're experimenting a little, and occasionally it works. And when it works, that's kind of the stuff that puts this ahead of the Black Album for me. There is a fair amount of stuff here, though, that like we've been talking about that kind of sounds like the precursor to the post-grunge stuff. And the record on the whole is way too long. So it's a mixed bag. I don't think it's much better than the Black Album. It just has a few. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this was the one that I had listened to the most previously. So maybe there's some nostalgia involved, too, and in me liking a few of these tracks a bit more than some of the Black Album stuff. But uh, I don't know. I think it's decent in spots so three stars for load my right, number six is the newest one 72 seasons and damn i got close to three stars on here i think it's just missing a couple of more memorable tracks 
But without it, I don't really think I'll go back to it. I do really like the sound of it. I think it's their best sounding album in a long time. I think it's rich, full, bold. I like the way it opens with the slow burn intro of the title track. Then it just starts burning it up. Shadows Follow, I think it's really cool. I think the solo on it is great. I feel like they're having a bit of fun on this album. There's touches of influences, I think, from all over their back catalog. I think the riff on Screaming Suicide is really cool. And maybe what they were kind of going for in those load and reload era records, their 70s hard rock homage. It works for me here. And the riff and solo on Too Far Gone proves that as well. There's not a whole lot of new invention here, but it's a good hearty Metallica record that's solid. It just needs a couple more really memorable songs. Um, Lux Saturna is really cool. It's got you know a lot of chaos and heavy ass drums that I really like. It's got a cool downhill speed. I think it's a good song, but you know, there's just the slower sludgy stuff is just not good at all. It's so boring. I like the bass on Sleepwalk My Life Away. Might be my favorite song in the album. Chasing Light is cool. If Darkness Had a Sun is cool. Yeah, I just think it's solid. Very close. Just needs two more good, very good songs, and I'd get it up to three, but I can't. Just two and a half. It's decent. All right. My number six is going to be Hardwired Self-Destruct which I like more now than I think I have in the past. I forget where I had it originally, but I don't think I had it at four stars, but I do now. I'm bumping it up to four. It's, you know, they don't know anything about brevity in this band. It's 77 minutes and 42 seconds long. And there's at least three songs that could be cut or trimmed and it'd be a better album. But I think after Death Magnetic, which sounds terrible, this album sounds great. Like it's, it's such a, a refreshing sound to the ears. Uh, the production is just a million times better, clearer, richer. You know, all the, the guitar tones are better. The drum sounds a thousand times better. Um, and this is really where they get back to like kind of the classic sound. It's still, you know, you're never going to get that thrash from the 80s. But uh, I think this album's pretty fast. It's pretty twisty. A uh, lot of progressive tendencies. And um, I think Hetfield's vocals sound better than they have, definitely, since you know, Black Album. Uh, it doesn't have that like pirate inflection anymore, which is good. And it's interesting, Hammett didn't have any writing credits on this album because his cell phone with his riffs got stolen or whatever. And yet... I like his work on this album, I think, more than anything he's done since the Black album. Uh, some good guitar solos. I think the guitar tones sound good. Atlas Rise, reminiscent of the thrash days. It goes kind of off in a bunch of different directions while simultaneously being catchy, which I think is a pretty good trick. Uh, got some good riff fests. And now that we're dead and moth to flame, they're long, but I, th I think they're interesting. I think they have like good hooks on them, which is refreshing because I don't think Death Magnetic had any good hooks. It was just sort of playing for playing sake and riffs for riffs sake. And these riffs sound good. Like they're pleasing to my ear. And, you know, it sounds kind of close to the Black Album to me, which is cleaner. You know, it's too clean for thrash, but they're trying for that thrash, you know, aura, that sound. So that works. And, you know, you get the extended solos, the instrumental parts, the progressive drumming and the bass and everything. And it just works way better. It just sounds great. You know, they, they're never going to get that primal anger and that like laser focused, like, you know, Hetfield's lyrics. Um, so it's, it's not as brainy, but um, I think it is just a good album. It could use maybe like a ballad or something or some kind of like change up because it is very like straightforward jackhammer. I think it's a good album. It's, I liked it. Um, I think some strong melodies and strong songs and yeah, four stars for, for Hardwired to Self-Destruct. All right. My number six is the new one, 72 Seasons, which feels a little less like a conscious attempt at getting back to their 80s sounds as the last two albums did, it feels kind of like a middle ground almost to me between the 80s and 90s Metallica. Uh, like a lot of it kind of feels a little like fast and speedy and 
the production is also kind of modern sounding. And like I think Joe said, it mentioned it being really clean sounding. I think Hammett's solos, I think, feel more like his 80s solos again. Uh, Sleepwalk My Life Away has that sort of like load era groove to it. So it's kind of a, I feel like a, a bit of a mishmash of of different Metallica eras going on on this one. I still wish the riffs on this were a little more memorable though. Like a lot of this record blends together. And if you're not paying attention, you could be like, have I been listening to the same song for 30 minutes? What's going on? Like, I have no idea where I am in the record or like what has changed. I've just been hearing like the same like jackhammer riffs over and over again. I think Hetfield, though, is maybe the biggest surprise of this record. His voice is getting higher and higher. <laughs> like the last couple records, Hardwired and now this, it's gone up even more. I don't know if it's like the way they're recording him or EQing him, but uh, it's, it's not that like guttural pirate thing, as Joe likes to say anymore. It's like almost sounding like his 80s voice again. Uh, I don't know what's what's happening there. That's very uncommon, but... Uh, yeah, I don't mind his voice much on this record at all, which has uh, been a while since I could say that about a Metallica record. Some of the screams on Lux Eterna, I think, are great. He sound, he's getting way up there. And Then there's also the thing that's been in the news about Kirk saying that um, his solos aren't that great and like anyone could play them better, which Joe seems to agree with. But I don't know. I I kind of I kind of like what he's doing on this record. It's kind of like it is. I mean, it's... Kirk Hammett by numbers he's just like slamming on the wall and but I think that's what works in Metallica I think it's the solo you want I want to hear a Kirk Hammett solo and uh I don't know I like his playing on this record so I was kind of torn the way Joe was between three and three and a half realistically as much of a Metallica fan as I am I, I'm gonna stay at three but maybe in, if you're a Metallica fan I would think that you would at least consider this a, a good effort so but just three for me well, to be clear where I stand, I love Kirk Hammett. It's easily my favorite thing about this band, and I don't think he's ever been a problem on anything. Also, a cool dude. Maybe the best wearer of black jeans in history. I don't know. Maybe that should be side three. He wears black jeans the best. Number five for me, this one flipping for me was number four last time. I've got self-titled The Black Album. Their big radio, mega-produced effort, bringing metal in the mainstream. We talked about it a lot. Enter Sandman, I think, is pretty cool and catchy. Great riff. But for me, it is an album of highs and lows, which is why I only have it three stars. I don't think it's a great album. I think there are enough very good songs on it to be a good album. I think Enter Sandman is really cool. Unforgiven is great. Nothing else matters. Holier than thou. But the songs I don't like, I really don't like. I've always hated Sad But True. I hate the way he goes, Sad But True. I just think it's really lazy, like, melody writing. I think it's terrible. Yeah, so high notes, low notes. I like the vision. I like the sound. I like the more mainstream, direct approach. And the songs are good enough, like I said, to get it three stars. But it's not a great album feel to it, which hurts it. So number five, Black Album, three stars. Uh, also my number five, Metallica, Black Album, 91, bringing Bob Rock. It pretty much, you know, pushed the limits of progressive metal as far as it could go with Injustice for All. Still trying to get over the death of Cliff Burton. And, you know, they pretty much pushed metal as far as it could go in the 80s. Like, that, that was it. Um, so it was time for them to get ridiculously famous and wealthy. So they bring in Bob Rock. They simplify... Uh, they make things a lot more mainstream sounding, it's much, you know, less, it's still dark, like it's still metal, but, you know, there's kind of like a winking humor to something like Enter Sandman. Like there's no way 80s Metallica would have the Sandman in any title at all. Um, so, you know, they, they lighten up a little bit, um, but they're still, still doing stuff, you know, Don't Tread on Me, has got that like Nickelback, like, bro gadsden flag kind of like post grunge like spirit to it but you know stuff like the unforgiven i think is great i love the way it's loud in the verses it gets those soft choruses which is a cool change up um sad but true's kind of more of that muscular 90s hard rock holier than thou probably my least favorite track on the album it's, it's plenty heavy and the drums are powerful and it's big and it's not raw but it's aggressive sounding 
but it, it, yeah, it's kind of lacking. And this is where Kirk Hammett really gets the wah going on all the solos. So it's sort of one note, a little bit. But, you know, you have a ballad, Nothing Else Matters, which is really pretty. That delicate guitar intro. Um, James Hetfield plays lead on that. Got a pretty nice solo. Uh, you got some orchestration coming in. So, you know, you, it's weird. Metallica's journey, their progression, like starting is rash and then getting in kind of brainy 20 somethings um attacking you know politics and social injustice and all this other stuff and then you know they get older and they sort of turn into like this brawny dad hard rock band it's a, a weird kind of progression that they went through and yeah this is probably the most successful reinvention in the history of music because you know it's a 20 million selling album on the heels of one of the least mainstream sounding albums of all time in Injustice for All. So, you know, good for them. They wanted to go this way and they pull it off. But it's hard to like really be pleased with this direction uh, in retrospect if you're like a big 80s Metallica fan, which I am. So I, I get it and I like the songs. They're they're good. So four stars but i don't know it, it's it's just like one of these albums it's like well i'll give it to them but i don't like it like i wish they hadn't done it seems like all three of us are big 80s metallica fans considering what we haven't talked about yet yeah uh, i'm not getting there yet though my number five is hardwired to self-destruct which I think is the best of their later era. They get a, a new producer for this one, Greg Fiddleman, who I am not really familiar with. I looked at what else he had done, and I don't know. He did Slipknot, some Slipknot stuff. He's done a bunch of stuff, but nothing I was that interested in. Uh, but I think he nails the production. I think it's the biggest maybe Metallica have ever sounded. It sounds massive. It highlights the the speedy thrashy sound that they're going for but it doesn't thin out the way you would expect that type of production to do it's not like he tried to mimic the sound of kill em all or or something like that and make and make it just kind of tiny sounding it sounds really really big but still sounds really good for what they're doing and playing this faster metal um i think it's a, a really well produced record the title track hardwired is i think balls to the wall in a way metallica haven't been in decades way more convincing than the, the stuff they were doing on Death Magnetic. Still not as memorable as their best stuff from the 80s, but I think the songwriting is way, way better than it has been for a while. I think I think Headfield's shortcomings, I think, don't stand out quite as much on this record as they have been standing out on past records as well. I think he's serviceable here. It uh, doesn't really bother me too much. I think if they could self-edit and maybe get this down to like a tight 40 minutes, I think it might be looked at as like a real triumph. It is a little too long. It's a double album, I guess, two discs. I feel like when this record first came out, there was like people were like super psyched about it. Metallica fans seemed to really, really like it. But then I feel like there was a little bit of a pushback or like some some like louder voices saying they weren't really that into it. I don't know. I'm surprised that Metallica fans don't seem to like this one more. I would think, like, what else do you want? Or, like, what can you really expect? Like, I think this is about as good as you can expect Metallica to be in the 2010s and beyond. I don't know how they could have done better than this, other than tightening it up and cutting a few of the excessive tracks. But I think it sounds really good. The songwriting is about as good as you can expect. I think the playing is really strong. I think it's really aggressive and loud and kind of furious and a, a, a good metal record so i'm at three and a half on it number five uh all right my number four my number four and believe it or not first of all the early videos they're hard to watch because we didn't really know what we wanted to convey you know we were just running through them it seemed like i didn't like metallica that much I very much enjoyed this revisit and pretty much all of my albums have gone up at least a half star here in the top four and justice for all goes from three stars to three and a half. That's my number four. 
my favorite lyrical album of theirs by far. It's like this piece of poetry of like government, politics and nature and Mother Earth and all of this stuff. And Joe's right. Like they were not just, you know, better in the 80s at with their lyrics and their themes. They were just flat out very good with them. Like not even just for a metal band. I think they were very solid. Um, but now that's why you don't hear them on the radio because they're this brainier, more, you know, thematic, full of prose sort of stuff. But I really like this album. I think the nature of it, very desolate, very icy, very gray, very bleak, but also very down to earth, very human. There's like a sense of hopelessness to it. I'm not crazy about not on the same level as St. Anger, but I don't like the way the snare drum sounds on here. There's way too much low end. It sounds like a body getting punched in like a Scorsese movie or something. It really bothers me. But it starts great, blackened, great opener. Title track's really strong. Eye of the Beholder is badass. Just missed my top 10 tomorrow. So much power and godlike march to it. Joe's going to differ with me here. I do not like one. I know Joe loves it to death. I'm sorry. I just, I don't feel it. I feel, and this I have as my note, I feel like this song, mostly because it's one of the slower ones, feels like a godparent to too much stuff I hate by bands like Stained in that era. Like, just... I just feel it. And I kind of feel like after one, the album loses me a little bit, just a little bit. It's not as strong as the first three songs for me, but you know, I, I'm still recommending it. Oh, I think it's very good. I think it sounds good other than that snare drum. And I just think it's kind of a work of art for them. Um, and maybe it misses, maybe it sacrifices a little bit of that, with a little bit of like the heaviness and the metal and the memorable riffs, but they were onto something here with like their artistry, which they should have followed up on instead of go with the black album. Like if we would have got injustice for all kind of part two or like, you know, that main, that stream of consciousness they were in would have been much more interesting than getting, you know, their stadium rock album. So my number four, three and a half stars and justice for all. Very nice. Uh, I can't remember if I had a justice for all four before. I feel like I did, uh, but this time I'm going to go with Kill 'Em All, and it, it's very close. Like these, these, these two, I think are just like right under the two masterpieces. And uh, Kill 'Em All's great because it's just like it doesn't have like that prose and that braininess. It's just like balls to the wall. This combination of you know metal and punk, which is basically what thrash was, um, just like a freight train of raw energy coming at you. I mean, the band barely even knew how to like play their instruments. Like Lars is terrible on this album. He just like thrashing around, doesn't matter at all. Uh, Kirk Hammett basically just built upon Dave Mustaine's framework. Dave Mustaine was in the band, helped write some of these songs. Uh, Hammett's solos basically just kind of expanded on, on Dave Mustaine's a little bit. Um, you know, Hetfield was raw as hell. The vocals are, you know, basically punk vocals. He's just like screaming and and yelling. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of big riffs. Um, sort of just like wild, out of control kind of stuff. The only person who knew how to play their instrument is Cliff Burton, uh, who started off basically uh, the only one who knew theory and what like harmonies and just like anything about music. He sort of anchors this whole album, which is great. And you can tell that he's a really good bass player from uh, Anesthesia, Pulling Teeth, which I love. It was one of the reasons I wanted to become a bass player. And, um, but, you know, it's just so much fun. Like, this is their fun record, even though it's like filled with songs like, you know, uh, Jump in the Fire and, you know, The Four Horsemen. And whiplash and you know, seeking destroy metal like it doesn't sound that fun but just the way like the enthusiasm with all these big riffs is great uh hit the lights just fast and furious all speed uh you know all thrash and aggression and i really like you know james hetfield's vocals on this album even though it, it, you know it's just horse screaming but it works so well i love that intersection between metal and punk and that rawness that this album and mostly this album alone brings uh you have a little bit of shredding um you, know, you get that dave mustaine 
uh, influence still in it because he wrote uh, some of the riffs and the Four Horsemen, Jump in the Fire, Phantom Lord, Metal Militia. He gets writing credits on, and he was probably a better, you know, instrumentalist at this point than anyone else. But I think Hetfield does a good job with the riffs. And I don't know. I mean, Hetfield and Ulrich write all the music. Hetfield writes all the lyrics, and there's sort of an underrated duo, despite like. Ulrich barely knowing how to play drums. I, I think he's a pretty good songwriter. So it's it's kind of weird the way that worked, but uh, those two kind of pulled it off. And this is just a head banging, fun ass, just thrash fest. And it's just great. Four and a half stars. I, I mean, it's just a ton of fun. All right. My number four is Ride the Lightning. Um, so I think there's there's quite a bit of musical growth between the debut in this and I, Joe mentioned them not really knowing how to play that well on Kill 'Em All, at least not as a band there. It's, it is kind of messy and, and it's much tighter here. And, and the writing is, you know, writing and the arrangements are way more sophisticated and complex and it's a heavier record. It's a darker record. It doesn't quite have the sense of fun of Kill 'Em All. Joe said that was a fun record and I agree I think a lot of like the darkness on Kill 'Em All is very tongue in cheek and it's kind of like, you know, kind of joking and uh kind of like a bad like B horror movie or something, but here they're like putting on their serious faces and like trying to convince you that they're actually like dark and evil or something and I, I don't know, it it doesn't play quite as well to me. I I like the more like fun angle of of the first record. Also on this record the production, I'm not super crazy about. It's a little dark and a little murky sounding. It's a little bit muddy, especially the drums. I think the snare, especially on Ride the Lightning, has like this big, like 70s rock sound to it. It's like this really, really big sounding snare, which is a snare sound I like, but not for metal. It doesn't work in the context. I don't think it cuts through the mix and it doesn't bring that kind of like attack and aggressive energy that you want. That said, though, I think the hits, the quote unquote hits are excellent for whom the bell tolls is awesome. I think it's a really great metal tune. Just so many cool like riffs and ideas, like starting with that, that like main bass riff and then some of the guitar leads and the descending lines. And like, it's just one idea after another and it's all super catchy and memorable. And I think it adds up to a, a really, really cool song and fade to black, I think is really good too. Kind of shows them, exploring some different directions it's kind of like partially a ballad but then it also gets pretty heavy and it's really melodic and i don't know i think that's a really good song as well musically i think this is one of their best efforts uh i think it, there's a lot of uh, a lot of good playing and like the ideas and things you can see them like putting together compositions and like turning them into real songs and like having some idea or concept behind what they're doing so in that sense, it's really good. It's held back a little by the production for me. I don't think it's a great sounding record. Um, not crazy about Fleming Rasmussen, um, but for what it is, pretty solid. Three and a half stars. Continue talking about it. It's my number three. And I'm at four stars, which is great. I think there are three great Metallica albums. And I I love the way Ride the Lightning sounds, but I also like that thinner sounds. I think the acoustic guitars on here sound so awesome. I think the whole album sounds like the band is riding a bolt of lightning sent from the gods. Like I said, I think it's so apropos. I love just how angelic it is, but and he's Jason's right. Like they take a big step forward in their maturity. They're trying to seem evil. You know, they're not trying these kids with messy hair and all this who like the misfits and all that. Now they're, you know, metal gods and all that. Fight Fire with Fire takes off of that speed and ferocity. So cool. Yeah, I mean, there's much more complex music theory. I think James sounds like really good and ferocious and believable in these early days. Just a lot of excitement to these songs. The way they have this like cinematic approach to building up songs and making you your blood boil and you're just waiting and waiting. How the kids these days would say, waiting for the beat to drop. Like you're waiting for just that big crash and then everything to just take off and start headbanging. For a lot of these songs, they're immediately gripping. You know, the title track is sick. 
for whom the bell tolls is just masterful in metal writing. Everything is there, the attitude, the power, the dynamic, the feel, the hook, that simple guitar part with the bell and the bass and everything. I like Fade to Black. I don't think it's amazing. Um, I have more of a problem with the placement of it. I think it kills. I think it needs to come one track later. I think it kills the momentum a little bit too early. Um, and very much like in Justice for All, I think the first 25, 30 minutes of the album are like a five star masterpiece. And then other than that, it's very good. So like if, if the second half was as good as the first half and maybe you flip um, Trapped Under Ice with Fade to Black and kept that momentum going, it would be close to five stars for me. I also think Trapped Under Ice is one of the most underrated songs in their catalog. I think it's just awesome. And Escape is awesome. Escape has one of their best choruses. So, you know, they're up just one album later, creating this really good melody and a chorus. It, it might even go up higher for me than four. I'm really digging these 80s Metallica albums last night. Yes, they rule. Um, I'm, I'm a little surprised that you guys both have Ride the Lightning Below, my number three, and Justice for All. But this, oh God, I mean, it's almost, it's hard to put this at number three because it is like, the most brutal, harshest, most like perfect, uncompromising vision for like what their worldview was at this point. They just lost Cliff Burton in you know, a tragic bus accident. And they're just like filled with anger and just, you know, sadness. And this whole album is just like filled with the primal cries of, you know, the band, a band that lost its soul in, in Burton and like their own internal agony sort of turned outward to critique American society and socioeconomic issues and, you know, war and government and just everything. Like this is as raw and as harsh, I think, as anything ever recorded by a major, you know, rock band ever. And it, you know, the sound of it without bass, like there's no bass at all. Like the bass is recorded, it's there, I guess, but it's so low, you can't hear it. So it has a completely unique and like one of a kind sound and almost, you know, I don't know if it was an accident or just like they were so mad that Burton was dead and you know, they took it out on Newstead, but a, a band now wouldn't make an album like this. Like they wouldn't turn the bass down like this so that it's just this like aural onslaught of, you know, this high end weird dry mix uh, that's like so sterile and alien sounding that like you just you you want some kind of bass you want some kind of low end and like it's it makes the album better that it's not giving to you it's like taking away this whole you know uh, part of the the musical spectrum uh, and the songs themselves are incredible they're so twisty uh, they're progressive they're always shifting gears just dead stops and you know it's, it's progressive metal like it's it's kind of far away from that thrash that punk sound of the uh first album um you have like a touch of that you know they basically follow the same pattern as master of puppets and red lightning they do that classical guitar intro on blackened um but this one's like a little more metal it's got twin guitar leads that build in the the riffage of the the meat of the song um and justice for all's got like that really neoclassical sync guitar solo and then descends in this just sludgy riff fest uh, and it brings back in that cool neoclassical riff um and like there's just like this emptiness without a bass like the drums like a sonic boom like it it you feel it in your ears without any bass at all it's really interesting cool like a pulverizing ear exploding echo um and it's just nothing that you've ever heard before and really nothing you'll ever hear again. Uh, I think one is just one of the greatest anti-war songs ever. The fact that Hetfield was able to deliver this like really brainy, complex, lyrical song based on uh, Johnny Get Got His Gun from Dalton Trumbo. Um, it, it proves, I think, that Hetfield was the master uh, metal lyricist in the 80s. And, you know, just the way the, the song builds and gets more frantic and harried and the machine gun fire drums and the time signature changes and the bleakness and the fact that it made the top 40 in the U.S. is just incredible. The late 80s were a wild ass time. Uh, Hammett has a great tapping solo part that's dual solo in the outro. 
it's just a masterpiece in my ears um and it, it, there's just like no respite like just the hammering riffs and the bleakness never stops and it's just so unique and so interesting to me that they were able to to do this and pull it off like they did uh so four and a half stars it's almost it's just like too much sometimes like i'd love to go five stars but i just don't want to listen to it as much as a five-star album would but i think it is a, a complete masterpiece so four and a half stars for injustice for all well i didn't give you guys the satisfaction of a trifecta last time and i am still not my number three is master of puppets i was reading the wikipedia on this record and saw a fun fact that i had never heard before apparently Lars was in talks to have Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson produce this album. Uh, that would have been interesting. Uh, apparently fell through. Never took took shape, but I, I had never heard that before. Lars took drum lessons before this record. His playing, I think, is much improved, way more crisp and precise than it is on the first two records. It's a it's a more riff centric rec- record, I think, and you know with tracks like Battery and Master of Puppets and Welcome Home, uh, you know I think they're they're taking their writing and their performing to a new level. I think uh, the production here, even though it's Rasmussen again, I think it's a little better than Ride the Lightning. I think it's not quite as muddy. Uh, the drums sound better, and I think the mix is a, a lot more clear than it was on Ride the Lightning. The whole band just all around feels like more seasoned. It, it really sounds like a band that's been playing nonstop for several years. Like they're really tight and seems like a well-oiled machine. And like I said, they've been practicing. Lars took drum lessons and Kirk was working with Satriani and stuff. So it's more technical. It's more precise, all that stuff. Uh, I think it sounds better than Ride the Lightning. Uh, I don't like anything on it as much as For Whom the Bell Tolls, though. I think that song is head and shoulders above even everything here. But uh, still, really good metal record. Three and a half stars, Master of Puppets. Right. My number two, it kills me. Kill them all. I really want this to be number one because there's so many things about it that I just love. I love the youthful rawness of it. I love that it's messy. I think James sounds the best here. His distant, faint, full of reverb vocals. I love the early 80s kind of sound. His screams on Four Horsemen are awesome. It's thinner. It's more thrash, more punk influence. You get some underground metal club vibes. Misfits kind of influence. Yeah, everything has just like this youthful energy, young triumphant kind of young rebel battle cry to it. More thrash, more punk. Hit the Lights is really cool. Four Horsemen I like a lot. The bass on Motor Breath is really awesome. Joe's right. It's just a really fun record. It feels like they're just like amped up, don't give a shit about anything and just rock out these tunes nonstop. Like the music will be more complex and take you on a more, you know, elaborate roller coaster later. But now it's all about the feel. And the compositions aren't terrible. There's still some pretty good memorable musicality here. Um, I love the way that Four Horsemen kind of moves. It's really good. Breathes when it should. Jump in the fire is really cool. Whiplash, a dig. I don't know why I can't bring to put it at number one. I think Jason has that number one, and I'm like literally jealous that he probably does i just think master of puppets is better it's just not as cool as kill them all all right well from one fun album to not fun i got ride the lightning is my number two and it's it, for me it's neck and neck with master uh is you know the best metallica album one of the greatest metal albums of all time and it's not fun um but it really sets like the tone and the content for all metal to follow the the things that metallica were concerned about you know impending nuclear war and suicide and the death penalty and sort of these socioeconomic issues i think all kind of stem from this album like you still get the call of cthulhu and there's a little of that fantasy stuff but for the most part like this is like real like horror this isn't like fantasy horror anymore um and I think a lot of that just stems from Hetfield's, I don't know, interest in these socially aware lyrics. 
uh, the the philosoph the philosophical references. You know, he's reading Hemingway if he's talking about for whom the bell tolls. So it's you know it's that braininess, I think that really sets it apart. And you know the music is just as aggressive and raw and powerful. And you know they did take lessons, and uh, Cliff Burton kind of taught them a little bit of music theory, and you can definitely tell. Uh, you got that neoclassical influence, a uh, little guitar part on Fight Fire with Fire before it descends and just like, you know, nuclear holocaust of riffage. It's the fastest song in the whole catalog. And it's just, you know, balls to the wall. Um, the amount of darkness and power is just incredible. I love uh, Hetfield's tremolo picking. He's an incredible rhythm guitarist. I mean, he really is this, the things he can do while singing is incredible to me. And technically, the band's much better. Uh, the guitar solos, I think, are, are way better. Ride the Lightning has a really cool solo from Hammett on it. Uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls has that awesome intro bass part from Burton. Fade to Black, you know, they were really the first metal band to like be like, all right, we're going to write a ballad about suicide. Uh, and it starts off kind of slow and those arpeggiated guitar notes. And then it kind of gets darker and darker and thrashier and heavier. Um, and just that, you know, their sense of dynamic and feel uh, and almost in a progressive tendency, I think is just awesome. I mean, I just think it's like, I don't know, the touchstone for that brainy metal when it's concerned about you know more than just dungeons and dragons and kind of fantasy stuff and it all kind of stems back from this one it's just a masterpiece it's five stars it has everything that you could ever ask for in metal uh, but it's just not quite as good as master of puppets so uh yeah five stars ride the lightning number two well cram you don't have to be jealous of me i have changed my mind Kill 'em All is my number two. This was my number one when I was forced to choose my favorite Metallica album with very little notice after you both selected Master of Puppets as your winners last time. Uh, just in case there was a trifecta situation, I had to make a call. I went with this one uh, without listening to the full catalog. So, uh, yeah, I like Kill 'em All. I, I think, you know. I like the rough edges on it. I, th I think it suits them. It has that little extra bit of energy. It's a little sloppy. The guitar tones aren't quite as dialed in as you might expect them to be on a, a release by a major artist, but they were not really a major artist at this point. I like the speediness of it. I like that there's like this punky edge to it. Uh, you know, it's not entirely removed from like the new wave of British heavy metal stuff. Uh, you know, like Early Maiden had a little bit of that punky energy to them as well. I like Headfield, Headfield's vocals a little more here, too. They're a little, like, higher. I, I like higher-voiced singers usually. So the higher he can be, the better. And you know, usually the younger uh, singers are able to do that a little uh, better. So I think his voice sounds better here than it does until 72 seasons when he's now back to sounding like this somehow there's some nods to like classic hard rock here too like some of the riffs sound a little bit like sped up ufo songs kind of so i, I like sort of that like 70s hard rock sound coming through a bit in places too and then you got seek and destroy which is probably the most iconic song on this album that riff is classic um you know one of those things that you might hear anytime you walk into a guitar center there might be someone playing seek and destroy along with a, a number of other metallica songs uh, the solo on Metal, Metal Militia, I think, is sweet. I love the way it kicks in. Uh, the way that solo starts is really, really cool. Um, three and a half stars. I like it. Kill them all. Number one, Master of Puppets. 4.5 stars. I really dig it. This might be the height of my... It's, Joe may have just been grooming me with like the Iron Maiden and the Judas Priest, and I gave really good scores to those. And now I'm really high on it. This album is just the marriage of their grandeur and power and speed and creativity. It's all there. It's all encompassing. It's just, you know, they're lightning in a bottle record from the elegant intro and battery, which erupts into this just awesome soaring riffs and then takes the fuck off. 
title track is so awesome and epic. The way everything crashes together is just so forceful. There's so much dynamic. The whole thing is just like this metal symphony, this magnum opus for whom the bell tolls is just so addictive. Welcome Home Sanitarium is super cool. The intensity, even when it slows down on this album, never gets dull. Um, there's technicality and precision everywhere. The second half isn't quite as memorable, but I think Orion is awesome. It's not a huge drop off. In general, I think the first half of almost every single one of their albums is a good star better than the second half. But yeah, I mean, what else can you say about it? It is just so grand and like, it's that mixture of ride the lightning and kill them all where it's heavy and it's got like that evil, you know, God like metal, like thematics, but it is also fun because it's just such a fun ride. It's a roller coaster of power and emotion. 4.5 master of pop. It's my favorite Metallica record. All right. Good to see you still have your senses, your wits about you. I'm, I'm going five, obviously for my master puppets. And, you know, I just think it's their masterpiece. It's where everything kind of pulls together. They have the dynamics. They have the metal theory. They have the riffs. They have the, you know, the lyrics I think are great. Hetfield really, you know, zeroing in on the socioeconomic stuff and the the war, um, you know, drug use and you know, everything. I, I think he's a very good lyricist in the 80s and he shows it all off here. Um, the riffs sound better. I think the production's a lot cleaner and clearer and more powerful, muscular. Um, I think Kirk Hammett's guitar work is the best on this by far. I love er everything that happens on Master of Puppets, I think is a masterpiece. The first solo from Hetfield um the second one from hammett the way it shifts gears so effortlessly you know it's eight and a half minutes long never for a second is it boring or you wish it ended uh sooner uh, welcome home sanitarium slots in at the number four which is the ballad position uh for metallica and it, it kind of apes a little bit of a fade to black it's got those cool arpeggios in it uh, that great build uh, it's kind of, you know, madness closes in on the narrator. Disposable Heroes is another incredible anti-war song, kind of from the the point of view of, of like a grunt or whatever. Uh, it's got that like bumblebee guitar lead in it. Uh, one of Hammett's best, uh, most inventive guitar solos. And, you know, it's just the way that they're able to like channel like the unknowable horror of the theater you know a theater of war in the songs with those jackhammer riffs and the machine gun drums and like it's almost like scary the way that they're able to pull that feeling in uh, i don't think anyone has quite done it better than than they have um i love orion one of my favorite all-time instrumentals the sort of alien building sound that kind of like comes in um and it's like this alien mechanical hum or something it's great i love burton's lead bass playing gives it a cool um you know different vibe that timber from the lead bass the effects that he put on it uh damage ink is great battery is great it's just you know a masterpiece it's five stars there's there's nothing bad or subpar about it Although I, I am interested to, to hear like what Getty Lee's vision would be for, for this album. Like how on earth would that make sense at all? Uh, I think it's probably better that um, Fleming Rasmussen produced it because uh, as, as interesting as Getty Lee producing Metallica sounds, I think they got it right uh, with, with this one. All right. My number one, I'm going with And Justice for All, the start of the Newstead era, but also the album where Newstead is inaudible. Uh, I kind of dig the production on this on this record, though. I like the, the, st the style of the production for metal in general. I think it, it would be nice to hear like what the lines were musically, like harmonically, what notes he's choosing to play would, I think, be informative. But sonically... I like the lack of bass. I think 
I, I like the dryness of it. I like the really clicky sounding kick drum. And I actually think it sounds really punchy and intense. I, I don't think the bass is missed that much. And I think usually on like metal, the way the bass is normally mixed, it's usually pretty tightly tucked into one of the guitars. So I think a lot of metal could, I think it's hard to hear the bass in a lot of metal basically. So I don't think it's a huge detriment that it's not there. And I think this is maybe the best that Lars's drums ever sounded. I think they sound really good on this record. They're creeping ever closer. They've kind of started going in the, that direction with um, Ride the Lightning, closer and closer to like prog metal. And I think, you know, the songs here are getting way more complex, longer. And I think there's this like palpable anger and intensity, intensity that Joe mentioned on this record where, you know, they're working through the loss of Cliff Burton and, I don't know. It's all just like very metal to me. I the, like the dryness of it and like th these like very like dark emotions. And I think Blackened is a great opener. I think the chorus melody is really good. Um, one, of course, I, I think is really good. I saw that video a ton growing up and it could not have been in 1988. I would have been. I, th I feel like they played that video well into the 90s. I feel like I was seeing it on MTV like 94, 95 all the time uh shortest straw i think some of my favorite work from kirk hammett on that song harvester of Sor sorrow i think is super heavy but it has this really cool groove to it uh i think ulrich's drumming here might be the best too he's doing a lot of really crazy double bass on on dyer's eve uh so i don't know i, I don't i don't necessarily think lars is a bad drummer i think he has i think he slipped maybe into not being super creative in the 90s but I, I i think i mean if you look at records like this and master of puppets i don't think his drumming is bad i think it's within him to be good just maybe a little lazy or uh, uncreative at times this one real close to four still at 3.5 for and justice for all no justice for metallica but, but it is but yeah. interesting to finally hear your takes on all this because yeah you, i never know what you're thinking like what you think of these bands so now that it's finally out in the open and everyone can see what you have to say i gave five five good records and a bunch of other pretty decent records so only how many did i give sub three to only two i think so I think most of their catalog is okay. I know. I don't think they're terrible. I don't hate them the way I hate some other bands that I've sat out. I just don't find them particularly interesting, and I think they're quite a bit overrated. I, I maintain that they're both overrated and underrated simultaneously. All right. Well, let us know what you think of Metallica, what you think of our lists. Drop it all down in the comments. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Of course, uh, check out all the links in the video description, all of our social media, as well as our Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel further. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for Top 10 Songs Inside 3. Just still don't know what that's going to be. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.